What's up, YouTube? This is your boy, JD, and thank you for viewing Coast to Coast Gamers. Uh, today is Tuesday, April the 3rd. Um, sorry to be posting this game up so late. I wanted to do it earlier, but I got lazy. Plus, I had some important stuff to do earlier as well. But um, as you can see, I'm about to play the Houston Rockets. As you can see, also in the playoff picture, the Rockets had taken second place over us because we lost a few games back to back and they got the Rockets to get the jump on us. So this is an important game for us. Um, hopefully, uh, with only with the few amount of games we got left, with us beating the Rockets on this one, hopefully we can get back in that second place. But if we don't, so be it. We'll just play the Lakers. The Lakers in the um, in the first round, and hopefully we don't have to play the Warriors if we ha uh, when we beat the Lakers. So with that said, let's go ahead and get to the gameplay. Let's do this. Great passer, David. There's no doubt he can set the table. Clark, we're seeing some dominant play by both these teams, and it may be a preview of the postseason. I tell you what, with the way both of these teams are playing, you could be exactly right, Kevin. I mean, games like this mean a little bit more than others when go. you're going against an opponent that's on par with where you are and where you want to go and checking out Utah's opening lineup they've got Anderson Rudy Gobert is out there with white side then there's Frazier and it's Mack in at the two spot you know the defense has to be conscious of his playmaking so a lot of times that gives Chris Paul plenty of room to get off the three-point shot Anderson's shot is off Capella with it he's picked up by white side and Chris Paul, the bucket on the assist from Capello. Paul's got five points so far. Nice way to start the evening. His number's getting called, and for good reason. Well, you know, Greg, they can count on him to get buckets. I mean, he's getting the ball. As you can tell, my uh, my star player is hurt. I forgot to mention that. Yeah, Donovan Mitchell is hurt. He's going to be out for a while. Hopefully, uh, he'll be back uh, during the uh, playoffs. So, yeah, that's why we been losing a lot of games because the star player is hurting. And it seems like Rudy Gobert is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. So I got to rely on all my bench players to get me through. So let's continue the game. I mean, seemed like they just were eager to get it done. Wanted it a tad more than the other team. Here's Frazier. No good. They had a chance to end the run there. Ariza against Frazier. Harden the pass to Ariza. Screen by Capella. Ariza kicks to Harden. Feeds to Capella. Over Gobert. And he gets that one to go off the front iron. And it just seems that every pass they make is leading to a score. Just great ball movement. And out of bounds as the Rockets gain possession. Simply missed the connection there. I mean, I like the unselfishness. Admirable, but just not the result. Rockets have gone 4-4 four four to start. So a nice offensive rhythm to start here. Dishes it to a reason. And that basket pushes the lead to double digits. Well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They keep getting it in the paint and continue to score consistently. Here's Mack. Good, and it's Frazier who picks up the assist. Mack's got his first three points of the game. And, and, you know, it took them a while to get going, but they finally connected now on their fourth shot of the game. They get it back. Capella with the bucket. Love how Capella stays alert on the offensive board, creating second chance opportunities thanks to that activity. Mack dishes to Whiteside over Anderson. Tries again. And he could not get that one to go. Out of contact, and he'll go to the line for two. Yeah, way to play in attack mode and get to the line. And you know, the defense gets their money's worth on that foul, stopping the layup and not giving up the and one. And a closer look here at the scoring breakdown for the Rockets. You know, guys, we've really seen them do a lot of damage in the paint so far. Also, guys, the passing has been terrific in the first half. They'll be happy with all those assists. The first free throw is good. And picks taken in the late first round can be a bit of a crapshoot, Clark. But Justin Anderson taken with the 21st pick back in 2015. 
He sure seems like a keeper. Yeah, I concur with everything you said there, Kevin. I mean, seeing him at Virginia, you knew he had the physical tools. It's just a matter of developing his skills and his shooting ability to be able to succeed at this level, and I think he will. Jazz trail by eight. Frazier outside. Down low. And the ball travels out of bounds. It was last touch by Whiteside. And we've got a moment to look at the rebounding trend over the last few months for Gobert. And those are some numbers that he can't be happy about. His rebounding totals have taken a dip over the past few months. He's got to get back to giving the kind of effort on the boards we were seeing from him early. Reza passes to Paul. Capella sets a screen for Paul. Great use of the pick to create room for the jumper. Paul's got his third basket of the night right there. And a first time out of the game called for Utah. They're moving on after the tough loss they took at the hands of the Blazers. I mean, frustrating when missed free throws become contagious. Really the Achilles heel in that one. Well, if you're going to win, you've got to shoot a good percentage from the stripe. And for them, they have no one to blame but themselves. Teams constantly jockeying for position. And they, I guess they're trying Clark for a lot of things. Home court advantage, one of them. Yeah, it certainly is a big factor. Not as much as you get to the latter rounds of the playoffs, but I think in the first rounds, it's um, critically important, especially if you're a relatively young team. And getting your first taste of playoff action, having the home court advantage could be huge for that kind of team. And you ask any Houston fan who the greatest player in the history of the franchise is, and they all say Akeem Olajuwon. Clark, you played against Olajuwon. Just how great a player was he? And what does he mean to this Rockets franchise today? Boy, he was special. A first ballot Hall of Famer brought the only titles in franchise history to the Rockets and could do everything you want from a big guy. Graceful, strong, a presence defensively and on the glass, unselfish. Uh, they called him Akeem the Dream. For good reason. That too was a dream to play with and a nightmare for opponents. And that's to Harden. Capella sets a screen for Harden. Ariza has the open look. No good with the triple. Not a lot going his way. Everything he's shooting is just off the mark. I mean, somehow he's got to figure out a way to turn it around. And it's going to be out of bounds. The Jazz will retain possession. Having an efficient three-point attack, very tough to defend. Let's see some of the best. In second, the Rockets. No doubt, they have snipers on that roster, that's for sure. It's been a terrific year for them from beyond the arc. Gordon's checked in for the Rockets. And Anderson Kikawa. Harden outside. Two pointers off the mark. And on an open look like that, he's very gifted at making the weak coverage pay. And here's Gobert. 26 points for him last game against Portland. Yeah, but I thought the shot blocking was the real story. I mean, he was just everywhere. It got hard to keep track of all his rejections. Harden dishes to Capella. Stolen by Anderson. <laughs> And there's the pass to Gobert. Shoots over Capella. A tad short, but it's good off the front iron. And so here is Houston. Six-point lead. They faced off right here last time they met, but the home club just couldn't pull out the win. And their last time against this club, they really fell short at the free throw line. Yeah, and that was the difference, really. I mean, you think about it, they didn't knock them down at the same rate, and that hurt them. And, and you just hate to give up those second-chance points. Yeah, those are back crushers. I mean, they really crack your back when you give teams second shots like that. For Utah, they have been successful on three of their four free throw attempts up to this point. Catching up on the changes for Houston. Spates checked in for Capella. P.J. Tucker comes in for Anderson. And it's Troy Daniels in for James Harden. Here's Gordon. It's good. He makes his first shot of the game. And Gordon's so efficient as a scorer, especially from the mid-range where he's almost automatic. Frazier the pass to Whiteside. Good, and it's Frazier who picks up the assist. Whiteside's got his second best. And they've done well at taking advantage of some late defensive rotations and getting the ball in the paint. Outside, Gordon. 
His shot is good, making him a perfect two for two from the floor. Nice to see Gordon use his touch down low. I mean, not the biggest guy, but still skilled at scoring close to the bucket. Shot by Frazier, no good. You know what, his finishing ability, not really at the level that you would expect from a pro, but he's going to have to start playing with more force. A nice shot by Tucker. And their offense already in a flow. Some stellar shooting to jump out to this dude. Quality looks they're getting, and they're capitalizing on them, guys. They have to be happy with this start offensively. And good passing, setting up a lot of these buckets right now, Kevin. That's been the key. Time dropping delights is what I call it. All right, yeah, that's a nice pass. I will give you that. One. Yeah, he's on the money. That's no doubt. What a sweet assist by CP3. Here's Frazier and Utah again with the bucket. And a lot of scoring here early on. This is the type of game the fans love to see. Tell you what, Greg, it's getting to the point where you assume every shot is going to go down. I mean, nobody's missing out there. Spates kicks to Paul. Houston working now with the new shot clock. Not quite enough defense that time around. Just lucky he was off. And Anderson slams it in. And the athleticism of Anderson is really impressive. Slashing to the rim with ease. Excellent speed allows him to do that. Not loose. The shot and game clock separated by four. Gordon a screen. Ball outside. Here's Tucker. Good, and Paul gets the assist. Tucker's got five points so far. Boy, the floor awareness of Chris Paul. Got to respect that. I mean, whenever one of his guys is open, he's getting the ball to him quickly and on time. A free-flowing first quarter. Great story. Through one. Vertically challenged. That's classic coming from Chris Paul. But, you know, seriously, Greg, he's taken that challenge and made the most of what he's got a terrific play it really and, and you know what he's actually turned that challenge on his head when he, when he goes right at much bigger players and, and uses their size against them. and now the second quarter just getting set to start and looking at what we've seen from Houston what do you guys think they've gotten that perimeter game going in that first and for me that was the difference Yep, firing with confidence and rhythm, Greg. I mean, not allowing the defense to take a break. All fueled up and ready to go. Let's reset the lineups, courtesy of Gatorade, as the second quarter gets going. So on the floor for Utah. Whiteside is out there with Anderson. And it's Rudy Gobert. Then it's Sheldon Mack. And it's Frazier in at the point guard. Whiteside a screen. Anderson outside. Misses the three, and he used the pump fake well there, but he couldn't capitalize. Well, you know, you talk about an NBA body. Justin Anderson, 6'6", about 230 pounds. As I recall, he posted a 43-inch vertical in the NBA combine. That's elite strength and athleticism. Just four to shoot. Fires from deep. And another three for Houston. And this is tough to stop if you're the defense. They have just gotten locked in from three-point range this quarter. And there's the eight-second call as they kick into the cross half court in time. Clark, you know it's interesting. The league is going towards small ball, but there's a demand for strong physical wings, and Justin Anderson certainly fits the bill. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly there. As more power forwards stray and navigate to the perimeter, you want guys who can defend shooting guard through power forward and Anderson has the body strength and quickness to do that. Jackson against Gordon. And it's Gordon finishing it off. And Gordon has the burst of speed you like to see in a guard. Excellent at knifing through the defense to the cup. Utah calls timeout. Clark, you know we like to reach out to fans and have them send in questions. So I've got one right now. Here's Alex in Ohio of all places. Uh, he asks, what sport other than basketball are you best at? I specialized early, Alex. Uh, I was a decent athlete, had good hands, could catch and throw a football pretty well, but didn't like the contact there. Right now, I'm actually just a good workout guy, and I'm trying to become a better-than-average golfer. Mike sets a screen. 
Spates gets to a reason. From deep Harden, and another three for Houston. And they're not afraid to let it fly from deep. They're looking to extend their lead with the three ball here in the second quarter. Jackson dishes the white side. This one on the play. Bucket's good. He'll go to the line. Well, we've seen that movie a few times, haven't we? An easy bucket in the paint. Well, listless and lifeless at the defensive end. I mean, especially inside. They've really got to pick up that interior defense. And the Rockets making a change here. Cabela's checked in. You know, guys, you've got to give much respect to the length of Whiteside. I mean, he's a hawking seven-footer who takes a lot of pride in being the defensive anchor for this team. Daniels, no good. I'm shocked that didn't turn into three points. I mean, he makes you pay on those nearly every time. It's Jackson with the drive. And here comes Harden, leading the fast break. Oh, and the dunk by Ariza. you got to respect and you can't sleep on the passing ability of Harden. Love how he zips it over to open team. There's the pick. Right side of screen. Anderson outside. Right side against right. Six on the shot clock. It'll go. The Rocket lead is cut down now to just eight points with the basket from Whiteside. And now he's taken a solid opening in the quarter and built on it here in the second. And there's the foul. It'll go on Sheldon Mack. That's foul number two for him. Anderson, he's checked in for Houston. Mitchell, he's checked in for the Jazz. To the wing on the left. Ariza outside. And some nice passing there by Houston. A three-pointer is right on target. Harden's got a couple of three-pointers in the second for the Rockets. And great job from beyond the arc this quarter. They are now shooting the three at almost 60% for the game. And of the last six baskets, five have come on the interior. This is just smash mouth physical basketball, guys. 18 feet out. The shot's good on the assist by Daniel. Harden's got 13. Love Harden's elusiveness. This guy so elusive. Finds ways to get the room he needs to shoot from the mid-range just the way he wants to. And Anderson gets it to go. And not a great start for him in the first, but he's quickly starting to turn it around. Daniels kicks to Harden. And stolen by Whiteside. Here's Anderson, and Utah again with the bucket. He's done a nice job, a great job, actually, of finding efficient shots here in the second. Shooting percentage always a function of the kinds of shots you get. And he's on a good roll after struggling a bit in the first. Capella kicks to Daniels. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. He's got five. And they've repeatedly probed inside in the first half, guys, and, and it's paid off. And then Mitchell with the dunk. Absolutely fearless. I mean, a, a nice, subtle adjustment there going up against Wynn. I could not say it any better, showing you some real focus, taking it inside against the bigger man. To the inside, Daniels plays it in without an inch of room around him. Daniels has got seven points for the quarter. And they've had assists now in their last three baskets. Out of bounds, Out of bounds. Houston takes possession. Now let's take a look at how the shots have been divided up between three-point shots and two-point shots for the Rockets. And this is a high-powered offense today. Clicking on all cylinders, making things happen, and also good use of the three ball. Just enough to keep the defense off balance. Now Ariza. He picked up 12 points in their last win against the Grizzlies in Memphis. And that one, good. Timeout, timeout. And now an 11-point Rocket lead. And I Harden. think they're winning because of him. I mean, he's hitting a lot of his shots right now. Utah calls timeout. As the team's head into this timeout, a chance for the coaches now to map out some plays for the next few minutes and a chance for the players to rehydrate with some Gatorade. That's important if they want to make sure they don't wear down later in the game. Absolutely. Over the course of a game, you have to stay hydrated. Chris Paul, he's checked in for Troy Daniels. Utah also making some changes. Yurebko comes in for Justin Anderson, and Raul Neto is subbed in for Jackson. And he found the perfect spot behind the arc there. Big gap in the deep. 
Screen by Capella. It's going to be out of bounds. The Rockets will retain possession. And now, a look at Rudy Gobert here. Since the All-Star break, he has been superb. Averaging 17 points per game, nine rebounds, and just over two blocks. And the numbers, while pretty outstanding, I mean, we now come to expect that from this guy. Completely in harmony with what his coach is trying to do there. Just a marvelous all-around talent. Jazz trail by eight. And you know, normally when you look at a guy like Whiteside with, with the field goal percentage and all, you think it's all about dunks. But I tell you what, he's improved his entire repertoire of scoring options near the rim. And now he's even showing that he can step out and knock down that little face-up 15-footer. Gordon's checked in for the Rockets. And even without that three-ball dropping for him, the defense should have done more on that last play. And it's Capella missing. That's what we're talking about in terms of the activity level defensively. you got to protect the rim. Mm -hmm. Textbook defense all around. Nice job at contesting the shot without fouling. And that's how you do it. Well done. Whiteside earlier in his career didn't have as many options to score, but Greg, he's been very conscious of keeping that improvement of his game, and especially on the offensive end. And Whiteside has been self-motivated since he's come back to the NBA. He's got the great length. Uh, he gets the hooks. He's got that baby hook up over the defenders, the soft shooting touch, and he just continues to improve offensively all the while still being a force on the defensive side of the floor. And Jarebko has it in the corner. Hands it from downtown. Now just a three-point rocket lead. That defense was totally lost. Don't know how you let a shooter get off such a clean look. Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. My goodness. He's going to put that one in his scrapbook. Insane dunk. And now they're starting to rub it in. Build up a lead, and here we go. Baby, it is showtime. And why not? A little salt in the wound. The more plays they make like that, the more they'll have these guys reeling and on the ropes. Mitchell passes to Whiteside. On deep, Neto. Here's Gobert. That one goes in for him, too, making it look easy. He's now four for four. And, and that's a great play on the backboard for him. I mean, it's what we expect. All his second-chance points do not come by accident. Anderson the screen. Stolen by Mitchell. That's tipped and taken away by Paul. And now here comes Gordon leading the break. Oh, he blocked it and deflects off the backboard. NATO. And that one is off. James Harden getting it done for the Houston Rockets. He's been a major threat from three point range. Got two of them to fall in that quarter. And a chance to. Thanks for the great interview, David. And we'll be back for the third quarter of basketball following halftime. The 2K Sports Halftime Show. It is a good game we have here after one half of play. Everybody, welcome back for our halftime show. Ernie James Harden led the way in the first half. He ended up with 15 points, four assists, and one block. He has bounced back nicely from what was a tough night for him in their last game. Judging by that first half, He's back to his old self again. Kenny, what would you think about the Rockets? Efficiency. You know, I think that's big. That's a key to success. You've got to protect the basketball. You can't make those risky passes that lead to highlight film dunks. So I thought it was a great job. How about you, Shaq? What did you think about Utah? The thing I liked was how they were making a conscious effort to work the ball inside. They should do the same in the second half. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Whether running the offense through the post, driving it, doesn't matter. Get to the rim, and the rest will take care of itself. Jazz trail by four. Filling out the wings, it's Harden and Ariza. Anderson is down low with Capella, and it's Paul in at the one spot. So that's who's on the floor for the Rockets. Here's Ariza. Anderson trying to free himself up. And there's Ariza. That's good on the assist from Capella. Cabela's got three assists now in this one. You know, one of the great strengths of Coach D'Antoni, to me, Kevin, is he really gives his players a lot of confidence. And his philosophy really clicks with players. They're comfortable playing for him. They know their responsibilities, and they play hard for D'Antoni. Shot by Frazier, no good. 
Rockets leading by six. Harden outside. Back to Anderson. Slammed home and he draws the foul. A chance for another point at the free throw line. They get Hassan Whiteside. Oh, I love watching him flush it home. Showing how easily he can get off the ground and bang it. And to what you said about Mike D'Antoni, he sees his players and asks, what can they do instead of what can't you do? And you know, he's had a lot of success last season, elevating the Rockets and winning coach of the year in the process. No doubt about it. He has done a ton to help his team, but he's going to have to do even more if they want to have a chance to get back in this one. Here's Harden. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot too. And you know about Harden shooting and his ability to get to the line and all that, but you know, Clark, what some people don't realize is just how fast he's going end to end. I mean, he can just blow by players in the open floor. Yeah, he's got deceptive speed, Kevin, and part of that is how he's worked to change his body from his college days at Arizona State to who he is in the NBA. He slimmed down a bit, but he still has that strength and that barrel-chestedness that allows him to play so well through contact, but you're right. His speed is lethal and deceptive. Ball kicks to Capella. Ball's knocked loose. It's stolen by Frazier. And now Utah, fast break. Here's Jefferson. Blindside, this is to Jefferson. And that one drops for him. Jefferson's got his first two points. If you let him get that deep, this is what you can expect. He's not only strong as ammonia down there, he's smart as Einstein, too. Poor effort from the defense. Nothing but money for him to start the half. They've made all three of their shot attempts. Jazz trail by seven. Right side a screen. Frazier the pass to Jefferson. Good, and it's Frazier who picks up the assist. Frazier's got his fourth assist with that last one here tonight. Screen by Capella. Paul kicks to Capella. Pass to Harden. Beyond the arc. The shot, no good. So Utah will take it the other way. Even with that miss, they're shooting 75% coming out of the break. That's a strong start to the half. Jefferson with the three. The call will go against Eurepka. That's his first foul. So for the Rockets, White comes in for Ryan Anderson. And Daniels subbed in for Trevor Ariza. And Utah with a change here, too. Deng's checked in. They set the pick. It's Harden with the drive. And it's Harden slamming it down. And Harden, an absolutely vicious dunker. Terrific at bouncing towards the rim for the epic throwdown. It's Jefferson outside. And the three ball is good. Jefferson's got two now from beyond the arc in the third for Utah. Screen by Capella. Paul dishes to Capella. Harden against Jefferson. It's Harden with the drive. Basket good. Harden's got 21. Tremendous speed on the drive. Harden is consistent in attacking the basket. Frazier kicks to Jefferson. Puts up a three. Offensive rebound, Gobert from outside the arc. That's good. The Houston lead is cut down now to just two on the basket from Jefferson. Great quarter for his look at the offensive end, trying to will his team back in the game. Ball kicks to Harden over Jefferson, but he recovers it. Goes up again, and Capella with the layup. Capella's got six. You know, Capella's really hard to deal with inside, especially inside. Does a nice job using his size to get that shot off. Here's Whiteside, and there's another one for the jam. And Clark, some great players who can score no matter the situation. With that in mind, who do you think are some of the best finishers right now in a, in a congested lane and in a lot of traffic? Well, there's only one guy on this list for me. I've never seen anybody do the contorting and the finishing from multiple angles against all size of defender that Kyrie Irving does. He is head and shoulders above any other finisher in the league, in my opinion. Nobody has done it like that guy does. And finally, they fought themselves back 
to even the score. We've got a new ball game here now. And really all the momentum is theirs making such a strong comeback. So I think you've got to really feel good about their chances the rest of the way. And the Rockets making a change here. Tucker's checked in. And Utah also making a switch. Jackson is checked in for Frazier. Man, right play, wrong result on that one. Generally, you knock those down. Not much else you can do there. I mean, that's what you want. Too bad they weren't able to finish it off. And he just drifts in off the baseline and throws down the amazing reverse windmill. I, I think, Greg, he was saving that one for us. Wow. And the coach is smiling because it went down. Would have been a different story had he missed it. Lays it up off the glass. Now it's a five-point Utah lead. And you got to love the big bucket in the paint in this sort of a grind-it-out game. Spates sets a screen. Gordon, the pass to Harden. Houston moving the ball around. To end the run. It falls for basket number nine from the field. He's taken 14 shots to get there. And it looks to me like he still has some of the shooting touch that he displayed in the first. Jefferson dishes to O'Quinn. And he can't answer back. The three-pointer offline. Rockets have gone 7 of 12 from the floor since coming out of the break. And Wright throws it down hard. And in terms of size, not your typical center. But, man, he plays as big as any of them thanks to that terrific leaping ability. Here's Dang to the left wing. Jefferson got it from 16 feet. Jefferson's got 15 points in just the second half. And he's showing signs now of life after going scoreless through the half. Got a hand on it, and they're able to recover. Utah leading. Twenty-one left to play in the third. Yeah, Jefferson, just great lift on these dunks. 21. Whenever he's near the basket, he is ready to turn one over. And the Rockets making a change here. Ariza's checked in, and Utah also making a switch. Mitchell, he's checked in for Jackson. One twenty-one left here in the third quarter. Jefferson against Harden. Outside Gordon. Over Mitchell. And with that, the Jazz lead has cut to just three points on the basket from Gordon. Hey, you can't substitute the importance of focus. I mean, Gordon does such a great job concentrating on the basket. That's what all good scorers do. And, and nobody, guys, among the defenders stepping up to challenge him on that drive to the team. And Greg, he says, thank you very much, and sails in for the flush. And those are the kind of sequences that tell you why the score is what it is. And Spates gets it to go. That was some slick passing from Harden on that one. Here's Mitchell. To the wing on the left. The shot's good from O'Quinn. And the Jazz lead by four. Well, check out that assist. That's a pair of teammates that are clearly on the same page. Here's Gordon. That's short off the rim. Utah has gone three of seven from three-point range here in quarter number three. Outside for Jefferson. Shoots it. Here's O'Quinn. He shoots again. And it's James Harden with the rebound. And that layup is usually going in, especially when the defense is as lazy as that. No good on the buzzer beater. And we'll be right back after this. And so it's Houston with it. And Utah looking at who they've got to start the fourth quarter. We've got Shelvin Mack. Hands out there with Kyle O'Quinn. Then there's Anderson. And it's Mitchell in a point. Here's Anderson. That shot misses. And it's Houston the other way. And with that, the Jazz lead is cut down to two on the bucket from James Harden. And one of the things about Harden is he is incredible at scoring despite getting hit. I mean, astonishing to me how he maintains his focus on these shots. And he shows us all what the breakaway rim was invented for. Can you believe he almost brought the whole thing down by hanging on that long? Boy, that was a great dunk, and we've got a great game here. A reason no luck. I didn't see that miss coming. I mean, he's usually been money from that range. Trying to go for an alley-oop, but excellent defense and anticipation there to stop it. 
inside. Got a piece of it. One on one here. Here's Anderson. And it's going to be two free throws. Drew contact on the shot. That one's on Eric Gordon. Justin Anderson brings tremendous athleticism. I love that. He's an excellent perimeter defender who just needs to keep improving on offense. First one falls for him. And Larry Nance Jr., son of three time NBA All Star, Larry Nance, and both of them known for their big time dunking ability. Well, you know what I like to say, Kevin? You can't run away uh -huh. from the DNA. <laughs> His father was the NBA's first dunk contest champion. And Junior has some highlight real dunks of his own, especially that one everybody perhaps saw over Brooke Lopez. What a punch. Right. Well executed, great rhythm. You've got to finish that one. Agree with you there, partner, because that screen really freed him up nicely, and that's a shot. And if you're a pro, you need to make that. Here's Mitchell. And O'Quinn kicks to Mitchell. And the whistle blows, so a chance here for a three-point play. They're finding lanes to the hoop now with consistency. Five buckets in a row from the paint. And on the flip side, Greg, the defenders have to show more fight on the interior. They've got to offer more resistance here. Here's Paul. Here's Anderson. And a great assist by Paul as that one goes in. Paul's got his fourth assist in this one. Mack, the pass to O'Quinn. Nance, outside. Mitchell kicks to Anderson. There's the dish to Mitchell. Shot clock at five. Tries from 16. And the shot is good, dropping in off the front of the rim. Nance has got the lead up to eight now for Utah. Anderson, the screen. Capella gets to a reason. Over to the wing. Paul for three. Paul can't get that one to fall. And they hold a huge advantage on the backboard. Greg, and that's been the key to this lead. I mean, they've really dominated the glass. Well, uh, this is what he likes to do. Try to break your spirit. I think he's trying to put this one away, quite honestly. I mean, he feels like he can lay it up against any type of defense, and he can't. On the free throw, no good. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Timeout call for Rockets. Yeah, and the amount of points they've given up here in the paint, that, that's what they got to talk about. Absolutely, Greg. I mean, they're getting crushed, killed, hammered, pulverized in the post. And let's catch up with our sideline reporter, David Aldridge. Well, guys, over that last break, I listened to Mike D'Antoni talk to his team. He was begging them to step it up. He said, we've got to make the move now. And we're going to be out of time and out of luck. Give it everything you've got out there. Kevin? All right, David, thanks. We'll take a look now at how the points have been generated so far. A scoring breakdown for the Jazz. Guys, their play close to the hoop has been great all game. And also, guys, they take a lot of pride in their ability to rebound the basketball, especially on the offensive end. And he's good on the second. We always talk about what a good shot is from time to time. Clark, how would you define a good shot in the context of an offensive possession? To me, Kevin, a good shot is a shot that a guy can make. 60 to 80 percent of the time when he takes it whether that's a three-point shot your post-up moves your mid-range jump shots those are quality shots and then the other piece of it is you don't want to take a lot of contested shots you can make them as a pro but good shots are shots you can make 60 to 80 percent of the time and usually that means you're getting open shots versus contested shots and you know what? They're winning, though, despite the fact that he has just been really off. A different look for Utah. Rudy Gobert is checked in for Kyle O'Quinn. Hassan Whiteside comes in for Larry Nance. And it's Frazier in for Mitchell. Gordon gets to a reason. Gordon a screen. The feed to Paul. Just five to shoot, and it's good for two. No problem at all operating in the paint for Chris Paul. He shoots an excellent percentage, even down there amongst the trees. 
Frazier kicks to Anderson over a reason. And it's Anderson that time on the assist by Frazier. Frazier's got assist number five here tonight. And just great offensive execution by both sides, leaving nothing on the table. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Greg, both of these teams completely aligned in sync right now. I mean, they are torching the Nets late in this ball game. And it's Whiteside off the drive. And Hassan Whiteside in this deep. Forget about it, Kevin. I mean, he's great at getting inside and finishing with force. Tipped away. Ariza against Anderson. Capella. And the dunk by Capella. And, and didn't do anything fancy there, but didn't need to. Nope. He, his only concern right now is getting the points on the board. And I, I don't mean style points. Hey, I thought there was some style there, guys. What are you guys looking at? I mean, it was still a pretty sweet, flavorful one-hand flush. Gordon with it. Now defended by Gobert. It's stolen by Gobert. Paul against Frazier. He kicks it to Anderson. Back to Frazier. Anderson with the block. Ariza outside. Off target from outside. Obviously, I mean, it would go a long way if he's making the shots. Right now, they're behind, and he certainly could use his help. Gobert can't hit. And, you know, the defense knew how to play at that time. Liked how the... Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a beautiful jam. Yes, indeed. And, you know, Ariza is a great utility Velcro kind of guy. I mean, somebody that knows how to dish the rock. Time out. If you're going in amongst the trees, you have got Garden. to be aggressive. Boy, like his intensity, Greg. He's not afraid to take it straight to the rack on the bigger defender. Right at it. A chance now to recognize our Jordan player of the game, Hassan Whiteside. And in terms of his shooting, this has been one of the more accurate performances you'll ever see. I mean, he's I'm sorry. Uh, Hassan, he played good, but the, the man of the game was Richard Jefferson. He put the spunk back into the team to get off their behinds and get their heads out of the sand, get their heads out of the sand, and actually play some ball. So my play of the game is Richard Jefferson, not Hassan Whiteside. Just saying. Eric Gordon. Rockets trail by 11. Paul with the ball. Harden outside. No good from outside. For Utah, they've gone 8 of 14 from the floor here in the fourth quarter. Gobert with a screen on Ariza. Stolen by Harden. 141 left to play here in the fourth. A nice shot by Anderson. Well, nice to see Anderson do some work inside. We know he's an outside shooter, but he's a determined scorer in close two. Here's Matt, and the layup is good. Max got the lead up to 11 now for the Jams. Playing big, willing to go toe to toe against a guy who towers over him. Yeah, I like his heart there, the competitive spirit. I mean, refusing to be held in check by bigger defenders. That's all heart and competitive spirit. 122 left to play in the final quarter. There's the screen to the middle. And Ariza with the stop. Sensational timing from the athletic forward. Ariza has great chemistry and awareness with his teammates. No one near right side as he lets it go. No good on the triple. Back to Anderson. 59 seconds left in the fourth quarter of this one. Second chance shot, and Capella sends it back. And every season, Capella has improved as a shot blocker. Timing, awareness, recognition. He's really good at erasing shot attempts. Frazier outside. Utah gets it back. Persistence pays off as they finally hit a shot. And the Jazz lead by 11. Screen by Capella. Paul against Frazier. Paul dishes to Capella. 
Gobert pulls it in. Oh, great effort there. That's how you defend the paint. Exactly. Can't play it any better than that, Greg. Right side, good. And leaving nothing to chance here on this game-clinching run. Exactly. Cold-blooded. Separation solidified. Great effort. You've got to love his aggressiveness to finish inside. Well, his leaping ability gives him a great advantage. Fellas, that's exactly why they look to get him the ball around the rim. I mean, it's either a dunk or free throws every time. Frazier, no good there. You know, Chris Paul is a first-rate on-the-ball defender. I mean, you rarely get a clean shot off on him. Well, we pulled it off. Thanks to Richard Jefferson hitting all those three-pointers and actually playing some defense. He slowed down James Harden a little bit, kind of frustrated him, threw him off his game. So I don't understand why the game said the player of the game is Hassan Whiteside. Why? Because he scored 19 plus points and he got like nine rebounds. When really the man of the game was really Richard Jefferson who brung. Look at that. Look at that vicious dunk that he did. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the, the game. I will be back soon to do another NBA 2K18. Like I said, I won't do a division game. Uh video until the 12th that's when the new update will, will take place so you guys take care y'all have a great tuesday and the rest of your week peace